10 seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Radiant team ban. Dire team ban. Between Team Freedom and Team Onyx, the actual just final game of the day period here on Ten Star Ladder I League remain. Star Series. This is the NA qualifiers round robin, so it's all best of twos. Team. Uh, team Freedom picked up game one. I'm your caster, VTM, and joining me is CCNC, my my co-host for the day. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, Ten uh, Team Freedom... They kicked some butt, and Five IX Mike remaining. is a badin. It's first phase banned. Team Onyx, Reserved. whereas Freedom, they're getting rid of the Pit Lord. Uh, do you think Bulba did enough on the Pit Lord, or is it more just Freedom probably don't want to deal with that potential of what it could turn into? Uh see what happens um i mean you don't see too many teams uh Omni running Knight. the three position abaddon so they actually grabbed themselves an omni Knight. they probably they were like oh we don't want to run it as a support um so we might as well be in it <laughs> drow ranger oh radiant team pick Oh my god. Dire team ban. Ba Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. But. But to play devil's advocate for Onyx, Ember, pretty good at getting in the back lines and dealing with the drow. If he can position his remnants properly and not get gusted, um, he can blast her down very, very fast, right? Not a hero that normally gets too too Five much health. Remaining. You know, tends to have a lot of armor and stuff. Dire so team it's not the most ideal lineup, but it's I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. seconds remaining five seconds Third. remaining reserve time Radiant team back. I, f I don't I don't want to be negative here, but I feel like they might fuck it up. You know, just being Dire out of out of practice pick. with the drow. Uh, but this could be a support or an offlane weaver. You Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. Mm-hmm. 
five seconds remaining. Yep. Reserve time. There's still the Sand King in the works. Um, do you, is that an IX Mike hero? Uh. Disruptor! Radiant team pick. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <clears throat> Onyx are really, really uh big and messing with Dyx Mike then. Reserve time. The mustache man. It's too powerful for him. They can't deal with it. Onyx that taking their worked. time though. Grabbing themselves a clockwork. Team pick. Good at catching out that drow or anyone who seems to be out of place the only problem is you lock yourself in the the cogs right it's your own prison the disruptor can just set you up kill you i mean a solo static storm just Ten for one clockwork remaining. not usually worth it but you never know in a scenario you might catch out Five your own teammate or something remaining. in there as well and then it's it's your own freaking prison reserve time Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I mean, looking at Batrider now, it's so sad just what he used to be compared to now. Just how, like, unbelievably broken he'd be considered. He had, what, 50 base damage or something? And Napalm gave, uh, 20 damage instead of 10 or something. It was insane. Yeah. The good old days. Anyway, uh, what what do you think Onyx can do to deal with this Bat Rider now? It's a little later in the, the draft, so it's not going to... He's not going to have too much focus on a counter. Um... There's still a support pick left. There's still Venge. It's still in the pool. Would Venge work with uh, the rest of Ten Onyx's draft? Remaining. Phantom Assassin. Dire team back. Yes. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant team ban. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I'm really Radiant interested in seeing 
uh, the mid pick for freedom. There's usually two ways you could go with the drow, dr uh, the drow lineup. You'll either want someone who can utilize that damage and get a shitload of kills with it, like say a storm, Ten even though he's banned. Remaining. But as an example, or someone who can take that damage and turn Keeper it into crap light. loads of pushing, and then your whole Dire team just team goes and pick. you know annihilates stuff. I really like that coddle pick. Pretty strong against the Weaver. I mean, if it's a support Weaver, right, he's not going to be getting Lincolns in forever. You may leak him up. He's never going to be able to get away. Legion commander. Legion, okay. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. that remaining. likes to be in these fights and such, uh, but also can fall behind on items remaining. a fair amount, so she can TP to a lane, go to a fight, and then get immediately recalled back. Go back to farming. Uh, the, the coddle this is around. Can, um, you know, maybe get a few items, but since the, the coddle is support and has an Omni Knight with them, it's going to be like a five coddle, so probably not going to be getting an Aghanims. Uh, reasonably just drink water with ants. What the heck? What the <laughs> Why are ants in his water? Man, I hate brown. That's not a good thing to say. Bike. Oh, it's that, mid drow. It's true, NA Dota right there. Okay, mid drow? So yep. So, that's, uh, that's greedy. ESJ LC. Um, neither of Onyx's supports are really good at rotating on mid at all. And the drow should have a fairly good time against his Ember Spear. Um, sort of has the same sort of uh, effect that the Viper does and that you can always just frost arrow them so you aren't taking aggro from the creeps. Um, you know, can punch them down and should be it should be a decent time for the draw ranger. You can get a very, very fast level six. And also, uh, you know, a little bit harder for them to just sort of rush at this mid lane as it is to run at the safe lane. Uh, BSJ also typically plays their LC. So I like this switch up, uh, putting the mid drought, it's unconventional, but I think it may work out in this game. I'll have to see. It's kind of interesting. It's a cool strategy from Freedom. Is Boutibi's down here and gets deep ward. They were smoked up as well, so it's not going to spot him, and they're not going to know that this ward is here either. So a little bit fortunate for Onyx, as well as Freedom, is they don't get spotted moving down to this bottom lane. They are going in deep. Really good ward there. Both teams prioritizing these these uh safe lane wards. Well, I guess no, that's an off lane ward. Lane wards rather than just in the mid lane, you know, for the vision. Thirty seconds to uh, battle. So yeah, they're these, anticipating uh, a lot of rotations, I would say. Yeah, let's you figure out where they're laning, uh, because freedom. Probably wants the LC to be against the the, the uh, PA. They want to have a one v one of the Batrider versus the Clockwork. Because the Batrider would do very well in that lane, or at least um, even. And then this LC Weaver Disruptor lane will do extremely well against this PA. A very very weak laning here early. They do have the Omni Knight heal as well as the Coddle Blast, so it's not the weakest lane in the world, but should be at least pretty good for uh, Freedom. And it'll also keep their supports down, so they won't be able to rotate onto the Drow with either the Coddle or the Omni Knight. So I really like this landing decision from Freedom. That's sort of why they do get these wards down, but it looks like they're actually going to go to a dual lane scenario now. BSJ and Eagle both going down to bottom. Disruptor going up to top to punish the Blockwork. So we'll see how these lanes go. Um, Onyx's heroes aren't really suited to deal with this dual lane early on, so... Freedom make it away with this greedy uh, lane setup. Not the Echo Challenge, just the dual lane. As well as the dual lane top. They could win all three lanes like this, we'll have to see. We will see. France is very, very deep near this tower. 
Um, that is one disadvantage Drowned does have versus the Amber Spirit is you can never break his shield because you have no magic damage. So, first couple of waves, he's going to be able to get a lot of creeps as he's going to have a seriously hard time pressuring him uh, is because his waves just, are just always going to be shoved in. So, only when the lane gets later, a little bit later in, uh, when he has a second Wraith Band, which he's working on now, starts getting more levels with this lane, get a little obnoxious for the Ember Spirit. But as of now, he's doing okay, has the wave on his hill. So, Ember, as of now, is, is, is fine with how the lanes are going. So, what I'm eager to see is how they're actually going to utilize this Legion. Is this still going to be, you know, one position Legion since it is BSJ, where you're primarily focused on on survival, or is there more... I mean, I, I guess I'm answering my own question. Uh, he, it's it's more of a, a singular fighter rather than focused on the team aspect. But that's re regardless, because Mason takes down Eagle. Remember... Yeah, they do get a nice kill on there, and Tomato may actually be going down mid. Flame shield, right clicks, yeah. Go after the boots first and the Ember, a really nice pickup, and not the kind of start you want to see for Freedom. Your Drow going down, as well as his bottom lane. Going quite well for Onyx, and still a whole lot of reach on a Mason, so they're not really near the point where they can force his PI out of lane. He has more CS than DSJ as well, just by a tad, so, so far, it's sort of backfiring a little bit, and all the lanes going quite well for Freedom. Maneski getting that solo kill, doubling up the draw CS as the boots and the bottle. Bottle very far from the boots, so the flame could devolve very quickly as Ember is going to get up above him on levels. Going to get to the level 5 or so. And when he gets that triple remnant, it's almost always going to have kill potential, so they have to oh, send Juby mid to help out Tomato here. Definitely not the kind of situation you want to be in, and a very good start for Onyx so far. It was very painful. Um, I, I mean, like the, the Ember here. When you're getting stomped by a melee hero as as a ranged hero, it's it's definitely a signal that there's uh something wrong. Bottom Dubu getting, getting chased down. Honestly, these engagements are so scrappy and like unconventional. It's just a little subtle harass here and there, and really hard to predict when these are going to turn into actual fights. We have the the group communal shower here. Eagle and BSJ. Um, I think Maneski may actually be going down mid. They have the level one glimpse, not quite in range. Only level one. Maneski barely gets away. And Juby coming in mid to help out Tomato. If he doesn't do that, then this lane's gonna get super grim for the draw very quickly. So coming in to help him out. When he gets to level six, things may turn around a bit, but he really needs those boosts. The Ember is just gonna continue to run it up and pressure him. But Demon almost going down bottom, barely living. BSJ going for the finish, but Demon dodging it out. And we'll live Ooh. with just 10 HP. Nice. <clears throat> so at this point in the game, you know, Freedom, it seems like they need a little a little help mid, right? They've got their Disruptor there. Legion is a pretty self-sufficient laner. Is it smart to keep this Weaver here, or would, would you maybe want to go help out the Batrider? Because at this point, it looks like the Weaver's just feeding. He's just a uh, fast food <laughs> for, for Mason. Yeah, they're barely getting there for get him there before he's Radiant's able to get his next Shikuchi off. Uh, I mean, the Weaver doesn't really do anything to him. They, he, they can maybe threaten to kill him this Clockwork, but killing a Clockwork is just... doesn't really do too much. He's just gonna come back up to this lane and get a 6. And he's Feels really like he's change. not doing anything in this lane either, though. He's pressuring uh, pressuring Mason, keeping him getting free farm. Only 16 CS on the PA currently, and also he's enabling BSJ to be down here. Um, stay in this lane. If he wasn't here, that he, the LC could get zoned out solo. And... Bat Rider is already having a good game, so you don't really need to enable him anymore. The Clockwork is going to get his levels regardless. So, just staying down here, continuing to mess with Mason. But he may even be able to get a kill here, pressuring a little bit, forcing him back. He's almost out of region now, he's going to be forced to use his salve just a little bit. Ooh, constantly healing him up. The uh, Coddle giving Dubu mana, so just constantly spamming these heals, keeping him full HP. So he's able to stay in this lane is really the only reason that this PA is getting as much as she is. So at what point though would they would they just take Eagle out of here? Like, is it after a certain amount of times he's died, or is it once BSJ's accomplished a certain item or 
rather Mason has not accomplished a certain item by a certain time. Uh, I mean, it just sort of depends on on feel and how the game's going. If there's someone else, if there's someone better, if somewhere better for him to be. I'll take that. Uh, you know, it depends on a lot of things, but I don't think it's so set in stone as just finishing one item or another. Fair point. Uh, I like Tomato's build here with the <laughs> maximum agi, really trying to help enable the rest, like his supports, with a lot of damage. It's I mean, this Weaver hits really hard already. 100 damage, has the Blight Stun as well. So it chunks down Toddle and Omni Knight. So they're scatter scattering over. Oh, BSJ looks nice. like he is the focus here. He does pull down the overwhelming odds, but oh, the Illuminate hitting him really hard. Mason and Francis both chasing down BSJ. He does manage to press the attack to get away, but there's no shrine, there's no heals, and he'll fall to Mason. Four levels of sticky deep on one X Mike, so they hit very hard with the triple remnant. It makes so much damage. Oh, IX Mike also falling to the Illuminate there. So scrappy though, Mason throwing out daggers left and right. Francis now with the double chains takes down a Weaver. <laughs> Looks like they're ready to fight Jubei now, but BSJ's here and he's at full health, so he's ready to man up on Francis. But the kinetic field not gonna stop him from running away just yet. Yeah, but he's gonna see back to base and heal. All the meanwhile, Tomato hitting mid. Um, we'll have the treads before too long. As the three bands of all the skin and the two wraith bands, gonna build on the treads as well as the dragon lance. So it looks funny yeah. now, but just helps him get some more damage up for his team. Like you said, the yeah. Weaver chased down this PA. Maybe we're gonna get a clean up the kill here. Has the swarm. Has another sh uh, Shikuchi in one oh. second. Nah. Keep chasing? No, a little too deep. Face boots on PA. Just barely get him out of there in time. So. Mason living with just a sliver of HP and has 1k gold now. The net worth, it's really not super pretty for freedom as BSJ, not really amazingly farmed right now. I expect might get a decent start and tries to rotate down the team, but while he leaves that whole time, Bulba just sitting up top of free farming, so 40 CS now on the clockwork. Looking quite good for him. I'm interested to see, like, once this clockwork starts to be a part of these team fights and actually involved on the map, what dynamic that's going to set. Because it's already looking like Freedom are having a very rough time just five on four, or four on four. Uh, and the clockwork, I mean, he's got max battery assault. This is, it's a lot of damage if he's stuck in a fight. Oh, Demon, trying to get out of there. He did do the blinding light. And he is out, there's the duel. The battery is all up. Oh man, the massive remnant damage. BSJ will fall. Jubei getting hook shot right into the face. Oh man, and then we're gonna have the the recall pulling out the clockwork. That was some finesse there by Onyx. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yep, they do get a couple kills there. Francis working on the veil, so. He's up to 1400 gold now on top of already having one now talisman getting pulled back to the base as well. He said so to be able to his TP is on cooldown, so not super crazy efficient, but it's healed up and walking back out. So the model just continues to farm these ancient camps, but really not as far as you want to be, only level eights. I guess the Ember Spirit is level eight as well, but you really want your job to be having an amazing start is got a reason on a farm, but these other heroes have had such poor starts. The Batrider having a good start in lane, but then kind of falling behind on net worth after a uh, fight not really going his way, and now BSJ having a pretty poor landing stage and trying to catch up mid. So, you know, over the map, just sort of in catch up mode, trying to get their support some levels, get this disruptor his level six, get Weaver some items so maybe he can have an, in have an impact on the game. Whereas Onyx, very fine with how the, the game is going now. Mason looks like he's going to go in for a man. Oh. They're going on Tomato, they get him with the Illuminate, and the odds are actually holding him back. But Bulba will get the hookshot kill, we actually have the lasso grabbing up Omni, the duel right in the middle of the Firefly. The Guardian Angel being popped, Demon running for his life, there's no dual damage there. Eagle getting chopped up at the edge of the fight. Illuminate doing a huge amount of damage to BSJ, he also falls. Now the dagger slowing down IX Mike. Huge crit, Francis and company all slice him apart. Bulba will take the kill there. And a pause. Yep. Find the drow. They realize that she's not in the. She's not in their jungle. She's not farming any of the lanes. So most probably at the ancients is a common uh, spot. The drow's farm. 
you chase her down with all these aggressive heroes like we talked about in the draft they're just super good at running down freedom unless they have a good start in these lanes which they really didn't getting losing almost all of their lanes the clockwork having a great time the ember getting that solo kill and now really rotating around showing off how good that hero is so overall onyx having a very very good start in this game five kills there so a five for zero fight at 10 minutes not really But now the, the the thing is they have to actually transfer this into some sort of map dominance. Last game we saw, they were taking some fights early on, but then they had a very hard time keeping team freedom down and really capitalizing off of the gains that they achieved in these fights. So, I mean, you can win as many fights as you want, but if you're never going to be able to take that next step and really <laughs> capitalize, go towards closing out the game it's uh it's just going to be a painful process and i think like they're doing that now they're trying to pressure bottom where mason is at least with the clockwork behind him ready to hook shot in if necessary nice yeah yeah bubble tvs to the tier two tower um looks like they may be going for smoke play game and buying one didn't have one on him currently Looks like they want to make move up to this top tower and maybe take it down. But oh, Mason stays bottom and finishes attack. off his vanguard. Let's see, Bubba running through. He'll be trying to find the Drow, who is around these parts. He may be able to get a hook and get the kill. Oh Let's my see. god, he might get him. Oh, a second there. Oh, nice. got got him. Him. oh the battery assault. You can die. The gust even misses. Oh, Bulba cleaning it up. Even if he gets flame breaked out of the cogs, still cleans it up there. We have the recall from Demon now. Francis and company are here. They're going to do exactly what I was saying. They're going to turn this into a tower. And it doesn't look like Freedom can really do anything about that at this point. Yep, they're going to take this tower down. They're going to have a lot of more map control over Freedom's jungle. So continuing to take taking advantage across the map with the Veil now up on Mineski as well. Trying to set up for a kill on mid, but just barely running, running out on time, weren't able to get the duel. Static Storm into place. Omni Knight just defending bottom, can't really pressure him either, and just all these heroes on Onyx, very difficult to kill. Ember Spirit is super slippery, the Omni Knight has heal, blade mail, and a point booster already on Clockwork. 5.3k net worth, he is so farmed. 12 minutes. 1500 HP. It's very, very hard for freedom to kill anyone with this Drow Strat. The damage they normally have is not really there right now. Bulbas had a great time. And yeah, he's top just top like a, a shark hunt. Oh, thirsty for blood. Oh, this duel. Bottom. PSJ getting his first damage of the game. And we have the lasso grabbing Bulba. God, he's so tanky. It's taken a whole team just to take him down. He even almost grabs Eagle as he goes. But the blade mail didn't last long enough. Francis is here to fight Tomato. Oh, Mason jumping in very, very close. The Gust's gonna push him back. Silence for a good chunk of time there. No dagger just yet to connect on. And Francis and Mason take down Tomato. Yeah. Francis, they're a little bit late to the party. Uh, they do lose three. Don't lose the tower, though. And. They do get the cleanup kill on the trial, so not the greatest for Onyx, but still not that big of a deal as they continue to farm up on some other cores, having the Vanguard now on Mason. Not doing much damage, but very, very tanky, and just being sort of that frontliner while the Emperor and the Clockwork do most of the damage with their early good starts. They have Blast as well for damage, the Omni Knight heal. So, PA gonna be winging to the death most probably next, and fix some of the shortcomings and damage he currently has. It, so, looking at this Batrider, oh, speaking of looking at this Batrider, huge crit, the Illuminate, as well as just some casual right clicks, takes him down. I was about to say, it feels like he hasn't really done too much in this game. Normally, your Batriders, you want them to, if they get online, I mean, he had a decent lane, right? Um, he got some farm, he wasn't pushed to the jungle. I think he'd be making space by then, but... What is it that's holding IX Mike down so much? Oh, I mean, they just lost, they lost a lot of their other lanes, and it's very hard to rotate. And 
fight around the map whenever they have this Omni Knight. The hook on the Tomato again. We have to gush back onto the PA, but that's not who you really need to take down. You need to get this clockwork. Battery Assault hurts. DSJ running in with the anime run. Oh man, these crits. Jason getting really lucky with these daggers. I, I feel so bad for BSJ right now, like, this man keeps trying to pull himself up. Has he fed any damage away yet? Not, no, he hasn't fed damage away, but his duels, not even turning into kills half the time. Get a rough lane. Eagle looks like he's about to get caught out. Yeah, Dubu, with that purification, takes the kill. Now Mason chasing down IX Mike. He goes up onto the cliff. Firefly. Allowing him to escape. Demonics are very brutal right now. And they're gearing up to take bottom tower, or at least how it appears. We have the Ember with the boots to travel now as well. Gonna be going for the Yule so we can purge off the silence. Can hold himself up in the air for a little bit while the static storm is going on. Some extra movement speed and lets him get in there a little bit faster. Overall, just Yule's a very nice item on Ember. Oh! <laughs> Eagle with the drive-by deny. <laughs> that was good. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a nice, uh, nice deny from him. Getting whatever they can. Slowly trying to slow down Onyx's roll as Bulba finds another kill on ESJ. So Bulba continuing oh to snowball God. ahead. Going to have a probably a 20-minute Agonims at this rate. So extremely farmed. Blade Mail on top. And Ix Mike has had the drums for quite some time now, it's still working on the blink, 1k gold now, so slowly creeping towards it, but this game really has slowed to a crawl for freedom, it's still only level 1 marksmanship on the drow as well, team farming ancients, as Eagle there's, picks up what he can down bottom. There's nowhere safe for this drow, I mean, even with these wards up, uh, hookshot man, 2500 range away, you can get caught out almost anywhere. Freedom are starving. Oh, they get the duel though on the Ember. Do they have enough damage to take him down? They're dumping everything on this man. No duel was won though. No duel damage, but it does end the unstoppable streak. Francis Lee there. A lot of gold. Yeah, it's a nice kill. They're able to get this top lane in as well. Uh, I think that was the reveal of BSJ's blanks. So they do get that nice kill. By the draw, a little bit of space up to level two. Uh, marksmanship or an out and almost up to that for a key fight, but Onyx oh storms into God. the dark. Clockwork with the hook on the tomato again. It's just a ruthless assault. This man is a stalker and we need to get a restraining order every time he is on him. Oh, now Jubei the focus. He does get the glints back, trying to TP out. Oh my God, Bulba with the cogs, preventing it. Good overwhelming odds from DSJ, but... Dubu is here, and he's ready to heal. Oh man, BSJ jumping in, trying to get that emergency duel. The cause so much pushing him off. They do actually grab that lasso though, so it will secure a kill. They get something. Eagle running through the fight. They actually take down the Coddle as well. Bat Rider falls though. Or IX Mike. Francis desperate to chase down BSJ. Yeah, they don't end up getting him, but. They clean up the Bat Rider. They lose the both the supports, but without dropping any cores, Francis coming in on the tail end, getting a couple of cleanup kills, and just overall a very nice, uh, a pretty decent fight for Chronix taking down the Drow once again. So just really beating right now, zero six and two, sort of basically the the opposite of the, how we saw Tomato. The start he had last game, extremely farm, constantly splitting over the map. This game. Trapped by his ancients, trying to get what literally can. And now, Freedom gonna smoke out. They do have the blink on IX Mike, the lasso in 20 seconds, so not currently. They're gonna look for whatever pick off they can. They do have the blink duel, so they may run into this Ember and get a pick off on him again. Really, really nice. He's, he is quite high on the net worth charts. So see. Doesn't look like they're gonna find anyone as Onyx runs straight to the Roshan pit. Gotta kill this off, and there's no way Freedom can contest this, so. Gonna be a free Aegis, most probably on this PA to continue just be extremely aggressive, go into these fights, and um, just pressure freedom, constantly taking these these fights. Ooh, freedom. 
I do have Francis Lee here. Rocket gonna be scouting out. Yep. So, Ember Spirit knows to be safe here. Yeah, X Flame Guard was in the sentry's path. Dodging out the silence. And now, Onyx just pushing in the mid lane. I'm sure they'd happily trade a tier one for a tier two. Yep, have the Desolate now on Mason, so the tower is going to get taken out pretty quickly with the minus armor. Neski, back to the mid lane. Running down back to the bottom lane. There's some wards, some freedoms. They will see them running down here. They may be able to take a fight around this high ground. This is a pretty good spot for them. They have the duel on bat. I mean, the uh, last on Batrider, but it's going to get moved down. Oh, they get the hook onto the badge. Cog him back. He's in the center of the action. Battery assault's going to help take him down. Looking like Team Freedom are, are running, turning tail, getting out of there as fast as possible. Jubei going to the south, so the team going to the north. BSJ got out of there with quickness. And Mason is on the hunt. Yep. Gonna finish off that mid tower they left to run out of bottom and pick up IX Mike. So another kill. Bulba with Agonims and Blade Mail now, 9.2k net worth. 20 minutes, like we said, about the time we were expecting him to get it at this rate. And now having that nice ward, seeing them running up to this top lane are going to catch him here. Great ward scouting where they're headed. Nice deep wards. Be able to hit the Bobo oh, on the drop. Uh, but Tomato with no TP and his Hurricane Pike on cooldown. Bobo, another hook in 6 minutes. Tomato still probably going to go down even with the over the uh, pressing attack on the LC. The Hurricane Pike, Tomato getting purged so that he can run the dagger. Oh, the unlucky crit. We get the hook shot forward on the BSJ. He's trapped. And the clockwork in the Firefly. There's that connect. It's not really doing much at all. Francis is stuck away from the fight, but meanwhile, we have a duel on the, in the front of that. There we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But downfalls BSJ. He might have gotten the damage. But at what cost? Oh man! Burned alive. Critted up by a dagger. This is painful. They did manage to get Bulba. That's a consolation. Yep, so a lot of gold going their way there, but they do lose five. They're gonna lose this tier two as well, so trading two for five. All these fights just continuing to go on its way as they really don't have a way to deal with this PA just all the way up in their face. 1500 HP, the Vanguard HP regen, the lifesteal from his level 15 talent now as well. I'm gonna go for this Lincoln, so once he has that, will be almost no way for Freedom to bring him down, combined with the Omni Knight heals. So, Onyx definitely in a super commanding position. He's TPing with the Shrine, gonna kill the Ancients and Shrine up. And Onyx probably gonna continue to deal with the aggression, gonna smoke to this bottom tower maybe, or just run there, stay grouped up, and really just wanna keep the pressure up, as they are extremely strong right now in Freedom. Really just taking a beating of the drought, only with the Hurricane Pike now at 22 minutes. All three of Onyx's cores above all of Freedom's cores. Painful. This drow 0, 7, and 4. Meanwhile, the Ember Spear 10, 1, and 9. And the PA 5, 0, 11. Painful. Painful time to be on Team Freedom. But they're gearing up, you know, they're doing what they can. They're sticking together, trying to huddle up and get some sort of farm. Their high ground defense isn't going to be the strongest. But. Hopefully, doesn't have to come down to that where they're just stuck in their base defending constantly. Yeah, they're gonna push out this top lane as a team. I expect pushing out mid a little bit now. DSJ team. Oh, the hook shot from downtown. Bulba catching IX Mike. And then up there we have battery assault. To get the glimpse back though, that's gonna stop Bulba from being able to continue further. Scouting with that rocket, yet yeah, not gonna be able to take down. Radiance top tower. Yeah, they are riding up to this top lane, almost Aghanims now on Radiance Eagle, so maybe gonna be able to save one of the cores so he gets like super committed on a fight, maybe turn it around. We'll have to see. So that could open up opportunities for Freedom to take a good fight. BSJ pushing down to the bottom, and Eski setting up for him. Does accidentally miss the Bolas, um, or slight in the wrong place top rather, top so. BSJ gonna live there, barely getting out in time, as Freedom grouping up these trees in the top left corner of the map, just trying to stay split, and if you find a pick off of some lone hero comes up to top with the Ember Spirit being up to push it up as they know all the heroes around bottom taking the shrine. So this is around the time Freedom are going to want to just be 
dodging every single engagement, at least until this Aegis is wear worn off. Um, what can Onyx do to really pressure them and, like, force that there's all... I mean, now it's a non-factor. But what could they have done to keep forcing the issue when they have that Aegis? How do they make sure that they get the outcome that they want? I'm just getting these lanes out looking for opportunities to smoke to freedom, looking for fights wherever they can, just continuing to, to push up the lanes as far as they can, so... They it's grab themselves a new boot. They get the lasso into the duel and might be able to take... Yeah, they take this, so a little bit more damage going the way for the LC. Yeah, just trying to get us to keep map control for as long as possible. Find these fights, uh, not get picked off by the Batrider and LC. And as this game goes later, um, they, they should be fine with the PA and Ember Spirit. Both cores is scale extremely well, going for the Lincolns now on Maneski. So, going to be very, very hard to take down. For sure. This is actually a pretty decent Lincoln, Lincoln's game, looking at it. Um, Team Freedom, they're going to have to be very well organized in, in dealing with that. I guess what would they do, just try to waste the glimpse on that before say a duel or so, something yeah that right get a force staff um the uh else you know yeah they can glimpse it they can thunder strike there's a few things they can break it off but we're all just a very very nice pickup that makes it very hard to kill this ember spirit they can try and just catch him in a uh, static storm as well and just not mess around with the lincolns and bring him down that mm -hmm. way is another possibility, but yeah, the Lincolns are definitely going to limit Freedom's options. ESJ does almost have the blade mount as well as the armlet, so super fighting in your face build, but much later than you'd like to have it. Is the PA already has the Lincolns as well as the Vanguard and the Desto, so extremely strong right now. And then Ember finishing up his Lincolns as well, so two Lincolns on both of the cores, and Bubble with a four staff now on top of the blade mount and Aghanims. Such an extremely farmed clockwork, 10, 2, and 10. And then on the other hand, I mean, Tomato here, just getting that Shadow Amulet. He's got high hopes to get to a Silver Edge, but feels like accomplishing that is such an uphill battle. Uh, Has the, the mech now on Dubu as well, so they're bolstering their team fight. 600 gold on top of it, smoking his backpack. So you can see just them pushing up really far, flying on this hill, farming out these waves as much as they can. Maneski pushing out bottom as he does have these bots, so we can always be with the team just constantly looking for fights, but freedom, got to sit in their base, draw this out as long as possible, and wait for Onyx to make some, some mistakes so they can maybe capitalize on, try and find some pickoffs with the Batrider or the LC, some of these non-Lincolns heroes, or if they have enough people with them to break the Lincolns, they can try and kill the Lincolns, of course, but they always have to be careful with this Omni Knight, where he is, and if he's behind them, just ready to mech, repel, ulti, and turn everything around, so they have to be very, very careful on freedom side. Oh, Freedom, they're gearing up, looking like they want to try to get a, a pick off. Yeah, flame break up. Yeah, Dubu getting recalled, and Mason just hightailing it out of there. He's pretty fast. Firefly just about up. They do actually grab the clockwork, though. He's dragged right into the center of everything. Dual up, pushing. Oh, man! BSJ actually dying, giving the damage to the clockwork there. Now Onyx on the forefront, the hook from way downtown. Down falls the disruptor. Francis Lee running forward. Good IX Mike though, juking and jiving. Get out of there. And instantly they're pinging out. Fen, Team Freedom do not want to lose any powers at this point. Because then that's a chink in the armor. That's. Oh, we can solve, but the towers fall so fast. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Oh, he gets time lapse back. But that might be okay. They get right into the shrine. Still might not be enough. Huge, huge crit there from Mason. Downfalls IX Mike and the Weaver. Kamado, <laughs> you're playing Ring Around the Rosie with these towers. DSJ jumping forward with that, that battle cry, getting ready to, to fight. Pressing the attack. And Mason doesn't even care at this point. There's nothing to counter the evasion. And you got just big old bodyguard, Ember Spirit. Oh, God. Speaking of Ember Spirit, taking down Jubei. 
Boba missing out on that hook. Francis Lee taking some damage. This is such a slow siege, but it's working. Motto is here. They pop the shrine. They at least can save this range barrack, but. Oh, BSJ slowly soldiering on. Gets time lapse back. Now Eagle will pay with his life. Francis Lee bouncing all over the place. The chains up. Motto. He will fall too. And that's good game. Radiant's Team Freedom have had enough. Yep. It's a very, very good draft for Onyx. And the draft shot really not working out. Freedom. Definitely going their way. This game is, last game was pretty close. Up to the end, wasn't sure who would take it, but Onyx.
Ooh. Radiant Team Pick. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I mean, looking at Batrider now, it's so sad just what he used to be compared to now. Just how, like, unbelievably broken he'd be considered. He had, what, 50 base damage or something? And Napalm gave, uh, 20 damage instead of 10 or something. It was insane. Yeah. The good old days. Anyway, uh, what what do you think Onyx can do to deal with this Bat Rider now? It's a little later in the the draft, so it's not gonna he's not gonna have too much focus on a counter. Um. There's still a support pick left. There's still Venge. Still in the pool. Would Venge work with uh, the rest of Ten Onyx's draft? Remaining. Phantom Assassin. Dire Team Bat. Yes. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant Stop. team ban. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I'm really Radiant interested in pick. seeing uh, the mid pick for freedom. There's usually two ways you could go with the drow, dr uh, the drow lineup. You'll either want someone who can utilize that damage and get a shitload of kills with it, like say a storm, Ten even though he's banned. Remaining. But as an example, or someone who can take that damage and turn Keeper it into crap light. loads of pushing, and then your whole Dire team just goes team and pick. you know annihilates stuff. I really like that coddle pick. Pretty strong against the Weaver. I mean, if it's a support Weaver, right, he's not going to be getting Lincolns in forever. You may leak him up. He's never going to be able to get away. Legion commander. Legion, okay. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. Seconds that remaining. likes to be in these fights and such, uh, but also can Five fall behind on items remaining. a fair amount, so she can TP to a lane, go to a fight, and then get immediately recalled back. Go back to farming, uh, the, the coddle is, is around. You can, um, you know, maybe get a few items, but since the, the coddle is support and has an Omni Knight with them, it's going to be like a 5 coddle, so probably not going to be getting an Aghanim's uh, reasonably strength water with ants. What the? Ten seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Ah. 
Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Between Team Freedom and Team Onyx, the actual just final game of the day, period, here on Star Ladder I League Star Series. This is the NA qualifiers, round robin, so it's all best of twos. Team, uh, team Freedom picked up game one. I'm your caster, VTM, and joining me is CCNC, my, my co host for the day. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, Ten uh, Team Freedom. They kicked some butt, and Five IX Mike remain. is a badden. It's first phase banned. Demonix, whereas Freedom, they're getting rid of the Pit Lord. Uh, do you think Bulba did enough on the Pit Lord, or is it more just Freedom probably don't want to deal with that potential of what it could turn into? Uh what happens um i mean you don't see too many teams uh omni running Knight. the three position abaddon so they actually grab themselves an omni Knight. they probably they're like oh we don't want to run it as a support uh, a support or an off lane weaver you mm -hmm. yeah 10 seconds you remaining Mm-hmm. Five seconds remaining. Damn. Reserve time. There's still the Sand King in the works. Um, do you, is that an IX Mike hero? Uh. Disruptor. Radiant team pick. seconds remaining five seconds remaining <clears throat> onyx are really really uh big and messing with the ix mic then Reserve time. the mustache man it's too powerful for him they can't deal with it onyx Dyer. taking their time though grabbing themselves a clockwork Dyer team pick good at catching out that drow or anyone who seems to be out of place the only problem is you lock yourself in the the cogs right it's your own prison the disruptor can just set you up kill you i mean a solo static storm just Ten for one clockwork remaining. not usually worth it but you never know in a scenario you might catch out Five your own teammate or something remaining. in there as well and then it's it's your own freaking prison reserve time Um, so we might as well be in it. <laughs> Drow Ranger. Oh. Radiant Team Pick. <laughs> oh my god. Dire Team Ban.
Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. But, so, but to play devil's advocate for Onyx, Ember, pretty good at getting in the back lines and dealing with the drow if he can position his remnants properly and not get gusted. Um, he can Ten seconds remaining. blast her down very, very fast, right? Not a hero that normally gets too too Five much health. Remaining. You know, tends to have a lot of armor and stuff, Dire so... Team it's not the most ideal lineup, but it's... I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. Really? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds Great. remaining. Reserve time. Team back. I, f I don't I don't want to be negative here, but I feel like they might fuck it up. You know, just being Dyer out of out of practice pick. with the drow. Uh, but this could.